Okay, the first one, it says Sal has a pentagon, A, B, C, D, E. He translates A, B, C, D, E to units to the left and then reflects it over the Y axis. Um, and it says use the connect line tool to draw L, M, N, O, P, which is the transformation. Um, so the connect line tool and add point are up here. So on a computer, you would click that to add points. Um, first points that you need to add is it says to translate it two units to the left. So you would translate these each point two units to the left. And then that would translate the whole shape two units to the left. But remember, you think about it in just individual points, and it makes it a little bit easier. OK, so translated it two units to the left. And now the next thing, it says to reflect it over the y-axis. So you would identify the y-axis, which is right here and then reflect those points over it. So in reflecting it, they would be the same distance, just on the other side. So this one is one unit away, so I put it one unit away from the y-axis on the other side. This point is at four, so I'd put it at negative four on the other side of the y-axis. This one's at seven, so I just translate it to negative seven over here. This one, and this one's at six, so put it at negative six. And then here is our answer that we would submit. OK, and then you might also notice that these points over here aren't part of the answer. Um, you may need to plot them just so you translated it to, to the left and then reflected it. You may have to plot those to figure out what the reflection is. But afterwards, delete those points because it's not part of the answer. And there's a delete button right there, so you just delete those points. OK, next one. And let me make sure this matches the answer key, too. That way, if there's something else, yeah, matches the answer key. OK, then a diagram is shown. It shows two parallel lines in a transversal. Corey uses the diagram to analyze the given statement. And they give us a statement. When a transversal intersects parallel lines, two angles are supplementary if and only if they are adjacent angles. So as you know, with parallel lines, there are angles that are equal, and there's also angles that are supplementary. This statement is saying that angles can only be supplementary if they're adjacent, so only if they're right next to each other. Now, those are supplementary, but that's not the only pair of supplementary angles we have here. So um, over here, it says, select one angle from each column to show a pair of angles that represents a counterexample. So they want you to prove that not just adjacent angles are supplementary in this diagram. So we need to find an example of non-adjacent angles that are supplementary, like maybe this angle and this one. Those two are supplementary, and they're not adjacent. So over here, what you would do is you'd try to find these angles. Now there's, of course, several different correct answers. This would just be one correct answer. This is FGH, so that would be this. On the computer, you'd click this one and it would like highlight purple. And we'll be practicing it on the computer too. And then this one, GMP, GMP is not over here, but PMG, yes, PMG is. So you could click these two. There are other pairs that are also a correct answer. For example, you could do FGH and KMO. These two would be supplementary and so on. There's more than one correct answer, but this would be one of them. OK, next one. Um, it shows a construction. Um, they won't actually have you draw a construction on the computer, not really possible. But they will like talk about the steps or what you're creating with this construction. And for this one, this these two parts are together. Like This is all one problem. This is the scenario, and then these are the questions they're asking about what's over here. So just looking over here, it says angle A and two steps of the construction are shown. Step one, they place the compass on A and draw arcs that intersect both rays. So they made a mark right here and right here using the compass. Um, and then here, using the same compass width from step one, draw the intersecting arcs. So they put the compass here. And then they made an arc here and here. Or from here, they would do it here and here. 
and we, they got point D. Okay, then looking at the questions, select phrases to create true statements. Constructing segment AD will create two congruent angles. So if they were to connect A to D right here, that would be an angle bisector. They do create two congruent angles. This is a drop down. Like you would just click this and it would have, have answer choices below. The one that would be correct is that the two congruent angles are angle B, A, D, and angle D, A, C. So you would just choose the drop down that had those two angles correct. Of course, it could say C, A, D, but just identifying that bottom portion. And then the next one, it says because A, D is what? Well, in this thing, A, D right here is an angle bisector. An angle bisector. And so you can also kind of hypothesize how this might be asked different on the test. So maybe they do segment bisector or something like that, or perpendicular bisector. Then part B, select all the lengths that are equivalent to segment AB. So over here, you would set the compass length to AB and it wants to know what segments are equal. Well, AC would definitely be the same length. Would AD be the same length? No, you can even see visually that wouldn't be the same length. BC, no, that doesn't really make any sense. BD, so this is D right here, would this length be the same as this? Yes, because you're using the same compass measurement to make that mark. So BD would be the same length and so would CD. And then last but not least, a figure composed of a right cone and right cylinder, which dimensions in feet is shown. Cool. What is the exact surface area in square feet of the figure? Okay, um, so as you know, with this chapter, we're doing volume and surface area, and it's just begun to build the concepts, and it will continue building the concepts. However, surface area is something that you've seen 6th, 7th, 8th grade, well, 6th and 7th for you guys, then you had algebra last year. Um, but you've definitely seen surface area before. Um, this is definitely a good example of what you would see on FSA, where they really build like the higher level thinking. Um, so yeah, let's go with it. So it's saying that this is a right cone. And, okay, so surface area, we need to find the surface area of the cone and the surface area of the cylinder. But this cone doesn't have a bottom, like as part of this. And the cylinder only has one surface on the outside here as far as like the bases go. So first thing we're gonna do is consider surface area of a cone. And that's where I'd go to the reference sheet. Luckily, they've put this on the reference sheet now. It used to not be here. Surface area of a cone right here. Each, that would be slant height or slant length, just different variables to say the same thing. So I'm going to just copy one of these. SA equals area of the base plus pi RL. But, as you can see, we aren't going to need to find the area of the base because the area of the base really isn't there. So, just cross this part out of the equation. And then we need to find the surface area of the cylinder. Cylinder, can't spell, surface area. Surface area of the cylinder, I'm going to the reference sheet. That is right here, 2 times the base plus perimeter times height. 2 times the area of the base plus perimeter times the height. Okay, but with the cylinder, we only have one base. The other one isn't there. So just take out this 2, and it's just one base, and then the perimeter times the height. Okay, so now we can start plugging in numbers for the surface area of the lateral part of the cone. By the way, sometimes they ask for lateral surface area. It just means all the way around, not including the base. So lateral surface area of the cone would be pi times the radius of this cone would be 1.5. And then the 
Slant height is 2.5. Um, then multiply this out. We're going to keep everything in terms of pi because it is m the most accurate way to go without rounding. So 1.5 times 2.5. I don't even know where my answer key went. I guess I'll plug it in the calculator. 1.5 times 2.5 is 3.75 pi. So that's the surface area of the lateral part of the cone. Then for this cylinder, we need area of the base and then area all the way around. So here, the area of the base is going to be pi r squared for area of a circle. And then perimeter of a cylinder, that would be circumference. Circumference is pi times diameter. So pi times diameter and then times height. Now we can plug values in. Pi radius 1.5 squared diameter would be double the radius so that would be 3 and height is 3 okay so we get 2.25 pi plus 9 pi add those two things together we get 11.25 pi Then to find the total surface area, so this is of the cone, this is of the cylinder part, and then total is 15 pi. And that's literally what's on the answer key to put in the box. Um, what it says on the answer key is it says either 15 pi or something equivalent, which I'm assuming that means the decimal version of that. So, yeah, but it's actually easier to just leave it in terms of pi. And that is an exact answer, not rounded. So that's cool. So when Geometry Nation is giving you these higher level problems, just know that that's what they'll show you and just kind of go with it and learn as you go. Okay, so you're going to keep this out on your desk so I can give you credit for it.